In a couple of minutes, we're going to discuss the Ravens experiment at wide receiver and what it's been and what it could be and what it could possibly mean. But first, we got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, my guy, Christopher R. and Arnold M. Appreciate the both of y'all very, very much. And shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. That's what's going to get us started today. Uh, the newest question, the first question came from a patron, my guy, Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Hey, so far, so great, man. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a wonderful day, too. He said, so I just seen the news about Mike Thomas and Sammy Watkins. What can I say? It didn't make us any worse. That's true. It didn't. The Ravens did not get worse at the wide receiver position at all. Uh, but it didn't push us over the top in my eyes. And, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't um, because that's, that's where we are at the point of the season. They, they ain't going to be able to make any crazy moves, anything like that, that way it's going to be like, oh, yeah, let's go. Even if they did sign an Odell Beckham Jr. It, they're not going to be able to do anything that's going to be like, all right, well, hey, we got it now. And you just got to try to make the most of this thing now, baby. Uh, what he said, in my opinion, signing these guys doesn't really matter if we aren't going to use them. Mm. Well, I mean, you know the story about the scheme and whatnot. Until they prove to us that they are willing to use uh, them, these signings just look like they're just trying things. Oh, so let Raven sort of experiment. Like, all right, we put a little here, we put a little there. Uh, like a little bit. Not a lot, but we put a little here, a little there. Oh, yeah, we'll see, see how it turns out. Um, and he said, but one thing I can say uh, is that they have four wide receivers with playoff experience under their belt. Yes, sir. Three with Super Bowl experience, but we'll see. And just like Prochet and Duve next year, I'm out. Oh, why you had to do Prochet and Duve like that? Um, Sammy Watkins Super Bowl experience, Marcus Robinson Super Bowl experience, uh, and did Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson ain't playing no Super Bowl, did, did he? I don't think he did. I don't, did he? No, I don't think I don't think he did. And, and if he did, I surely don't remember. Um, but because obviously not Prochet and Duvernay. Man, you you really making me think. I, mm, Deshaun Jackson, did, I don't think he did, but either, well, no. Nah. No, nah, he didn't. I don't think he did. But anyway, um, yeah, man, they, they they trying stuff out, man. They're just trying some stuff out. And I, f I feel like the Ravens are looking at it right now like, hey, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, this feels like a dream. Has a better upside than Tyler Huntley. Oh wow, that's interesting. I don't know. I I, I don't know enough about him um, to say that he does or he does not. That that is such a great question, though. Wow. Um, I know I have been seeing a lot of people calling for Anthony Brown after that last uh, game against the Browns for Tyler Huntley. Um, but I, I just I, I don't know. And, and for the last game uh, against the Browns, I, I don't really think it's it was an indictment. On Tyler Huntley as much as it was on uh, Greg Roman and, and the Ravens for just getting away from what was working. Um, but I, I don't know. That That's a really great question. As far as I, I think he got more potential like pushing the ball downfield. Um, but other than that, I, I, I really don't know. I can't say. <laughs> Next question came from my guy. Another patron. Appreciate you. My guy Jason E.G. He said engraving the only question or thought. Now, can we run Greg Roman out of town? Well, you could, but you got the person who it really should have a lot more focus on still here. Next question came from another patron, my guy Plex. He said, the deal is done. The cake has been baked. Like I said before, there's nothing that we can be, that can be said that hasn't been said already. We have three games left, winning two out of the three should win us the division or at least get us a playoff spot. True. Uh, with that being said, I know a lot of people are calling for coaches to be fired, but it's too late. It's too late to try to implement a new offense. It's too late to make an outside hire. Realistically, who would want the job? That's a really good point. Um, I mean... You you could if you fired a coach you could but yeah the the offense is pretty much set in stone it's pretty much set in stone so that that's a really really good point I don't think about but it it could provide a little spark maybe I mean what's the worst that could happen though what's the worst that could happen if you fired a coach uh, but anyway 
Um, he said, realistically, who would want the job? Our receivers are subpar. There's five tight ends on the roster, and for whatever reason, we need a fullback on the field 60% of the time. Nobody is looking at that saying, I can work with that. This is the perfect place for me. A team headed toward the playoffs isn't firing the head coach with three games left. Oh, no. Not, no, not at all. Uh, however, this season, however, this season ends, this will be the coaching staff that goes down with the ship. Harbaugh talking about the passing game needs to be better. He's just trying to save face. Where you been the past three years? You the head, you head honcho. It starts with you. He kept roaming around to be the fall guy. I knew it wasn't going to happen. That's what he's doing with all of the bad coordinators he's hired. The fans give them the blame. They get fired, and Harbaugh brings in someone else who is just inept, and the cycle continues in two to three years. I mean, if y'all want, we can end an episode right now. We could end the episode right now. But anyway, let's keep going. He said, I've been peeped it. Uh, but at what what point does everyone look at the head coach? Yeah. Episode done. <laughs> let's go ahead and squash it. We out. And this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. But hold up there, buddy. We had to bring it back because we, we got to finish. Anyway, he said, every coordinator except maybe one or two has been fired, not hired away. We're not losing good ones. It's been this way for over a decade. Ain't nobody plucking coaches off the hardball tree. It's time to chop it down. And let me add this. We dropped to the five seed after Tampa bombed against Cincy. Oh, man. I, I was hoping, We was all rooting for Tampa, but I just didn't think they... They were going to pull through. But anyway, he said, personally, this isn't a bad spot. We will play whoever wins the AFC South. I have full confidence that we can beat whoever wins that division. I know we already lost to Jacksonville, but I don't see it happening again. Winning the division is cool and all, but I care about advancing in the playoffs. I want the easiest role possible. And if we happen to lose, fire everybody. It's a win-win situation for me. And, it, like, even with that, like, it ain't, it ain't no easy roads. Ain't no easy roads. Like, but you, the playoffs are not easy. I mean, Ravens know from experience. It ain't easy. Uh, but anyway, he said, I don't know if you record already, but let me try to sneak this in. Harbaugh said this verbatim. It wasn't that we were, sub we were opposed to running the ball, but when you run the ball, the clock runs. We were looking at how many possessions we were going to get and called more passes. John, what? The clock also runs when you throw the ball, John. We were averaging more yards per rush than per completion, John. Were you banking on us having incompletions and the clock stopping, John? The clock also stops if you run out of bounds, John. He playing on my top, and I don't, I don't appreciate that. My intelligence was insulted. Oh, okay, so Plex, you got to come to the end of the ball with the rest of us. Next question came from another patron, my guy Nazarene. He said, hey, big bro, how you feeling? Man, your boy John Harbaugh is a funny guy. He is now. Hey, you got to give, give him that. Hubball is real funny, man. He had you rolling. But anyway, he said, forgive my rant and allow me to stir up the flock. Seems like he was in his feelings about those questions about his coach. LOL. He basically told us all to shut up and just watch them play. That's a real bright idea to tell your fan base who puts money in your pockets to shut up. Uh, I know right now he hates us in the media and we all obviously don't care. Uh, Baltimore City heard his comments and everyone is upset. If anyone was tired of Harbaugh still being our coach, you probably got your wish coming up this offseason. I wouldn't be surprised to hear a lot of boos or see an empty stadium. It's time for us to stop supporting the team we love to send a massive message. Steve Shotty is going to have a problem if the fans uh, bucked on Harbaugh and his mob. I'm tired of them. I was one of the people against the fully guaranteed contract and still am. I'm a Ravens fan first, but but man, if I'm Lamar, I will not play for the Ravens for a coach who cannot identify that a change needs to be made. I can't play for a coach who can't call his own plays. I can't play for a coach who thinks analytics is perfect situational football moments. I just can't play for a coach that sees the running game, couldn't be stopped by a team, but decided to throw it all fourth quarter with 10 minutes left. I just can't. Mm. Sorry, fire Harbaugh and his homie Greg Roman, short, short arm self. That man disrespected the fans. Super out of pocket. Harbaugh is a motivational speaker and a special teams guru. And I know Harbaugh fans are going to say, but he wins. No, nah, the coordinators win. The players win. That man don't do nothing but tell them good job. Wow. No X's and O's. He is a fraud. Ray, Reed, Suggs, Tucker, Flacco, and Lamar. They carried him. They made him. His resume is from their leadership. Not Joe Cool. He, he was too cool. We see what happened when they retired or left the team. I kept quiet for years about Lamar saving his job. Harbaugh is doing to Lamar what the Lions did to Barry Sanders. Oof. Ooh, malpractice. He is doing what the 76ers did to Iverson. He's all about himself. Prime example last year against the Broncos. He's about records and not winning. Yeah, I said it and I'm going to say it again. Harbaugh right now cares about records more than winning. This guy just wants to get in the playoffs to make himself look good. Then we get spanked. Man, I'm sorry I got to do this. I'm hot about his comments. And at last, all you Harbaugh fans saying he's better than Sean Payton, you're definitely delusional. Yeah, Sean Payton had Breeze, but who was Breeze before Payton? Yeah, I thought so. That man is a very special coach. Y'all, jealousy is sad, man. Let's not act like Breeze wasn't choking in the playoffs. You give Lamar Payton, that young man going to be weapon X. We never went into rebuild mode, really. We tried to refurbish this team. That's true. Yeah, they, they, they were never in rebuild mode with Lamar. 
Uh, Ozzy had bad contracts in his last years as GM. This is why we couldn't make moves. The whole thing is just a mess. Ravens Nation has to get these people out of here by making Steven EDC pockets thinner. That's all I have to say, which was a lot. But let's go, Ravens. I'm talking about the players, not the coaches. <laughs> have a good day, fam. Also, if we if we have to trade for Sean Payton, I'm good on that note. Have a great day, fam. Appreciate it, man. And, yeah, they, they would if they did that. And, I mean, yeah, because Saints obviously got his rights. Um, but, yeah, you you sure said a lot. Now, um, as far as the, the, the Flacco and them carry, I, I know Ray Lewis and Air Reid and whatnot, they, they did – uh, carry that team to the Super Bowl. That was especially Ray Lewis. Um, but Flat, uh, not Flacco. Harbaugh did have a big part in that. And I, I mean, as much as I think it, it could be a good thing to get a fresh start uh, for all parties, for Harbaugh, for the Ravens and stuff. I, I, I can't sit up here and deny that Harbaugh had a big impact on that Super Bowl. Like Harbaugh came in, um, and he dra he drafted his quarterback. I mean, they wanted to draft Matt Ryan, but it didn't work out. And thank goodness it didn't work out. But um, he wanted to draft Matt Ryan, but they didn't. But they drafted Joe Flacco. They drafted Ray Rice. They drafted Torrey Smith. Um, so the, and there's some more guys, too. Ed Dixon, Dennis Pitt, and whatnot. So they did draft guys that impacted that Super Bowl a lot. Now, of course, Ray Lewis was huge, obviously huger than huge in that. Um, but they Harbaugh did have a big impact on uh, the Super Bowl. Um, but, yeah, it seems as if uh, – it seems like stuff has sort of run its course. And I know, again, Ravens sitting at 9-5. and five. They're sitting at 9-5. and five. Um, So that that's a wonderful thing. But I feel like so many Ravens fans just feel like it, it may be a lost cause. The reason I, I think so many Ravens fans feel like it's, the season may still be a lost cause, like I, it's a lot of Ravens fans that, I mean, obviously hope that the Ravens win and whatnot, but just don't see it happening. Because um, cause we, we still see like the same stuff, that's had the same issues that keep happening um, especially in key moments and key and key game. like even this like this past game, why why do you stop running? Why and and it's like they do weird things in games situationally and whatnot, and then the explanation to the weird things that they do it don't even make sense. So I know a lot of fans are upset and just they're over it. Uh, but let's see how the rest of the season shakes out, baby. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, why are the Ravens allowing JK to play injured? Why put him in a position at this stage of his recovery? Why? There are three other more healthy running backs on his team. He should not play until he gets paid. Just another reason to question the leadership and balance of this coaching staff. Completely irresponsible. Hashtag fire Hobbs. I mean, JK, the best thing they got right now running back. And it's like, it's been crazy to see how great he's been. I think the, the bigger question should be, why are they not running JK more? Um, with JK, it's, it's weird though Because he had the clean up surgery He came back I mean, obviously been balling out since he'd been back But he um, they, they talked about him possibly getting healthy As the season goes along But I think I feel like that's impossible Like how can you get healthier As the season goes along in football At, Unless I'm missing something And it's just something I'm naive to How can you get healthier as time goes along Because um, it's a physical sport Your body's taking all these hits and whatnot But I don't know and then uh, his next question was, will Ravens start Anthony Brown versus the Falcons? I, I don't think they will. I think they're still going to roll with Huntley. I told you, Engraver. Next question came from my boy Kevin. He said, I told you, brother, that Greg Roman, a.k.a. his bad situation in play calling is the problem. What you mean? You told I've been saying that for the longest. We've been saying that like for, for forever. But anyway, he said, I sent you a previous e email telling you that he doesn't pass off his runs. He'll do something that's working for one play, then call two more plays that are completely different from what's working. Example, Ravens run the ball down the field and get into the red zone. Then he goes shotgun pass. What has been going on since he took over the, as OC? Buffalo Bills in the playoffs in 2020. Uh, Ravens run it down the field, get inside near the red zone, shotgun pass, pick six. It's like he's doing it on purpose. Uh, why isn't anyone pointing out that that's how the Browns had Watson why isn't anyone pointing out that how the Browns had Watson play action fake off of their run to pass short crossing routes and more time to throw off play action? Why not just run your pass plays like that, Greg Roman? This is a copycat league. Keep it simple and effective. I mean, yeah, it don't take any like football guru to see that and, and to realize that and to, to continue to build off of what's working. Like nobody's saying not to throw the ball at all, but that run game was working. Browns weren't stopping it. You stopped yourself. Why make it easier for the Browns? And then he said one last thing. This is why I said put Drake at wide receiver because now you don't use him at all. This is pathetic coaching. Yikes. Next question came from my guy BRG. He said, hey, Engraven, hope you and the family are doing good. Been rocking with you for a while now. I remember back in the day when you were still doing Madden content uh, and playing against you in Madden 15. Oh, wow. Took it back, man. I appreciate that. Ooh, that was a minute ago. I appreciate it. He said, question. So me personally, I believe that the Ravens could be trying to franchise tag Lamar, and here's why. Oh, yeah. 
Like, I, yeah. Yeah, now, one thing um, that I was, I was thinking about, um, but, yeah, I think it would end up Lamar being franchise tagged anyway, but if they re-sign Roquan Smith early on, um, if they re-sign him earlier, that would give them the option to have the franchise tag a place on somebody else. But at the same time, they wouldn't let Lamar walk for free anyway. So anyway, uh, he said, I, I think the Ravens can franchise tag Lamar. Uh, it, it, I think if the Ravens can franchise tag Lamar, they will be able to focus on bringing in wide receiver weapons for him in the offseason because we all know our Ravens. If we were to sign him in Roquan, the Ravens would probably not bring in any wide receivers that can truly make a difference for us in offseason and free agency. If he would accept the franchise tag, we could probably get him some nice weapons to see Lamar's true potential. What are your thoughts? The franchise tag is going to be like 40-something million on a cap straight up why why would they all of a sudden now when lamar is the most expensive that he will ever be like right now he's the cheapest he's tw it's 23 mil that's gonna probably at least double next year when the ravens franchise tag him if he stays and he plays on the franchise tag but that's gonna at least double next year why would they um all of a sudden all of a sudden now in lamar's sixth year they haven't done it year, year one, I give them a pass. Year two, I give them a pass. But they still haven't done it. They haven't done it in, in the previous three years. They haven't done it in, pre in his previous five years. Why would all of a sudden the Ravens would all of a sudden change a, with Lamar playing on a franchise tag? It wouldn't make any sense for them to because th that's not how they operate. So if they ain't done it back then when he was super cheap, why would they do it when he's expensive? Is the defense fed up with Greg Roman? Next question came from my guy, Kyron. He said, what's up, Engraven? This email's being sent the night of the Browns game. I don't need to talk about how horrendous our offense looked today outside of Gus and JK. But as you can see, Tyus Bowser posted this on his IG story. There were actually multiple papers on the ground that said the same thing, but he zoomed in on one. It says, fire Greg Roman. Do you think, just like this fan base, the defense is fed up with Roman, his play calls, and his schemes? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and this is why I said when we talked about that in that video, there's no way that you can minimize that situation. You can't just brush it off. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, he was joking around. No, you're a, a, an active player on your team who is not being benched, is not being punished, is not being doghoused. None of that stuff. An active player on your team who the Ravens absolutely love. He went out of his way. To, to record those those papers on the ground that came from somebody in, inside the Ravens because can't nobody get into that facility. It's, 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 it's guarded and whatnot. They got security and all that. An active play. He, he went and rec record, proceeded to look at the papers, looked at them before he recorded. He looked at them and read them. Oh, oh fire Greg Roman. You know what? Let me record this and upload it to my story. That's big. Next question came from my guy Numa. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your family are doing well. Shout out to Pookie. Hey, appreciate that. This is the, the lack of light at the end of the tunnel. Even with our 9-5 and five record and leading the wild card race, I still have a really bad feeling about the postseason. With everything we've seen this year from these Ravens, I can't really see us having much success against these stacked AFC teams in the playoffs. I'm not completely counting us out yet, uh, though, because as long as we got number eight, anything can happen. I'd like to see us make it out of the first round, but there's so much holding this team back, and the likelihood of us making any sort of change with the offensive philosophy is almost zero. I hate to have this, this kind of mindset, but I'm just going off of what I see on live TV every Sunday. Uh, do you feel the same way? Is this team really built for January? How far can we go with the hard nose running down your throat and play good defense strategy? Have a great day and a great week. Whew. Um, Ravens can be, I, I can understand why you feel that way. I, I get it. This is something that we was talking about earlier in the video, as a matter of fact, um, during uh, Nazarene's question. But it's like the Ravens, they, 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 they like their, big, their own worst enemy, their biggest worst enemy. Um, because they, and again, the game on against the Browns just showed you that. The way that they built the roster showed you that. Um, the, the losses this year, and again, we know Ravens ain't about to lose every single game, but even the, the, the losses, they showed you that. They showed you that. And again, this team is capable of so much, but... They just love shooting themselves in the foot so many different ways. So it's like I can understand why a lot of fans don't have the most confidence going into the playoffs because they've seen this team, not even just teams of the past, but they see, they see, they've seen this team shoot themselves in the foot so many times. 
you feel like it's just going to continue come playoff time. Moving at a turtle's pace. You talking about green turtle? Anyway, next question came from my guy Luffy. He said, what's up, Engraven? I just read the news about Devin Duvernay getting hurt, and it made me think. I remember in the offseason when the people who were in their right minds were clamoring about how we shouldn't go into this year expecting so much of out of our young guys. But what if the organization wasn't really counting on the young guys or weren't really going to use them anyway? This could explain, explain why Dude's role was slowly diminished as he was beginning to really get his feet under him. Anyway, we said this was a possibility, especially because of what the past showed and the type of division you're in on top of your style of play. We lost all one for the year and our two just got hurt heading into the playoffs. Yes, this can happen to a star receiver, and this is maybe why they don't invest in them. But if that's the case, you're not building to win. It's a very timid and conservative strategy because any position on the field is liable to get hurt. Now we're scrambling for a receiver while also not using the ones that we have on the roster. But I'm hoping for the best, uh, like Lamar coming back and leading us to the Super Bowl, and the defense will have to heavily uh, be relied upon to wrap up my semi-rant. What's your honest opinion on how deep into the playoffs you think we can make with our squad and what will be crucial for us to win in the playoffs? And how people want Giro to be so badly, even though I know it won't change much, I'm out. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, for the Ravens to go deep into the playoffs, uh, they would have to get out of their own way. Um, they would have to, they, they, their game would have to complement each other. I think one of the biggest things that could go a long way would be them just scoring points. Straight up like that, just scoring points. I think if they... Simplify stuff. Just stop overthinking everything. Stop trying to make stuff so complicated because it's really not. Um, stop trying to outsmart yourself uh, because they. I mean, you think that they try to outsmart the opponent, but they they do so much trying to outsmart the opponents, they end up outsmarting themselves. Um, stop shooting yourselves in the foot. But yeah, scoring points will go such a long way. And I know that sounds so simple, but with this defense, uh, if this defense can keep holding it down, like they have been a lot of games. Um, they had their blunders here and there for sure, but if they could hold it down for the most part, Ravens offense could just score points. Uh, that could take them a very, very long way. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, GW. Well, he said, keeping some seats warm at the end of the ball. First things first, man, Ravens flock, appreciate you so much, dude. Thanks for everything you're doing for showing us how to disagree with one another and our organizations with class and respect. Don't try to do that whole humble thing. You're the GOAT, and your hard work and consistency doesn't go unnoticed. No, we are not no GOAT at all. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you, though, man. And I, I appreciate you being a mod. I appreciate you supporting over the years, man, because I know you've been, you've been around for a long time, man. But anyway, he said, with that being said, I'm going to speak very plainly. I don't mean to be disrespectful, and maybe I'm not perceiving things clearly, but I am concerned about the future of this franchise under this mentality. Now my discourse is out the way. Uh, has John Harbaugh's stubbornness blinded him to the point where he won't see the ship is actually sinking until he's neck deep? Is he so secure that he won't do... He won't do this dude. Do, do, he won't do his due diligence because the information is coming from a platform he doesn't live in social media. Uh, I see what you did there. Uh, he said, I get it. We are just fans. We don't see the workings and atmosphere within a facility on a daily basis. But does that mean we're just inadly wrong uh, that our end of the bar chatter carries no merit for argument's sake? Let's just say it doesn't. Let's say we were all the way off base. Is the national media at the end of the bar too? If they are, then do the articles written years ago highlighting a coach that does not know how to adapt or correct his mistakes. Hold no merit if the same issues, play calling, scheme, time management are still glaring issues costing you games. Once again, let's just say no. How about ex-players that have openly spoken out about issues uh, with the offensive scheme under Greg Roman? Cool. Let's say that they don't know what they're talking about either. How about the players that played under Greg Roman that have gone on social and national media and done the same? Their concerns have no merit as well either. A fact, not even disputable. A player literally chose to leave his best friend after having a 1,000-yard season instead of staying in this system, but that's just business. Isn't it time to wake up and smell the, the daisies? Please, John. Don't die on this hill. Open your eyes for your sake and for your players, which I know you truly care for. Where does the end of the bar start? Because from here, it seems like the end of the bar is getting more crowded by the day. And if you're not careful, Mr. Harbaugh, you could be sitting right here with us. And he says, sources, RG3, Marquise Hollywood Brown, Willie Sneed, Dez Bryant, Steve Young, Steve Smith, Kurt Warner, Chad Johnson, Mina Kimes, Swagoo, Dan Ovlosky, Warren Sharp, and counting. Oof. What a way to end off this episode with that fire. Um, yeah, uh, Harbaugh just, he did what a lot of people do, and he just discounted the fans' perspective, and that's why I say, uh, I, I talk about it a lot, I just, I don't think you can do that, because fans are not stupid, I, I think Harbaugh is just frustrated with all this talk that's been going on about the Ravens, um, from fans, on social media, on all that stuff, and I'm sure he gets his reports from social media and whatnot, but, um, and obviously he does because when a player posts something 
bad on there or whatnot, then the hub always talk, hey, I talked to them. Did it with Tyus Bowser, talked about it with Lamar. I remember even with Hollywood, with Hollywood about the soldiers and Hollywood was something else too. Uh but he ended up deleting it. But it is they saw it already. So um it's just one of those things where uh the fa- you you can't discredit fans just because they're fans, and it's like that's I feel like that's like a, an easy way to sort of alienate yourself from the fans, and the fans is what like fans are, are a huge part of business, obviously, because this is a business. You don't want to alienate your customers, paying customers. Hey, paying customers, man, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear none of that. It's like really, yeah, that's pretty much what he said, man. Um, so, so I just Not that you gotta sit up here And listen to fans This and that cause it, But it could get tricky Cause you he, There's been plenty of time Where he's talked about the fans How much the Ravens love the fans They appreciate the fans And da 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 Fans showing all the support But um, Fans are upset For a reason Cause they see stuff That's going on They see stuff that's happening They see these different things That they should be frustrated about And they are frustrated about And fans they, they just want so much better Because they see that potential in there with the team and with the players and stuff um, But it's like it's just not being brought out And it's just been consistent issues After consistent issues That are fixable issues But they're not being fixed Yeah this feels like a dream And you know just what I mean You see my boy He like gotta made it How to made it Boy he's a fan And he like the Ravens Like the Ravens And you know just what I mean You two team keep it clean Shout out to Graven.